Now we're going to go ahead and start color grading and I'm going to be using gradient maps. So you just press them right here and you're just going to kind of click on that little gradient and it's going to get you to the gradient editor and I have a bunch of gradients already made here and I'm going to be using this one right here. It's kind of a turquoise and then black. Uh, if you do not know how to make gradients, all you do is you just kind of click on this box right here, choose the color that you want, then press OK and same right here, double click, choose the color and you can literally make any color here that you desire and then again press OK. And yeah, um, now we're going to choose from normal right here to multiply. And this is where all the magic happens. You can see it already became really really blue but it's a little bit too crazy so we're going to lower the opacity here and see how much we just want to lower it down. Maybe, maybe to about right here. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to actually apply another layer of gradient map and this time is going to be this one right here and now instead of black I'm just changing it into this kind of like a brownish almost greenish color and on this side it's just a lighter turquoise more even like bluish maybe I even want to change it a little bit more blue just like that and then again we're just going to multiply it and lower the opacity to whatever you think looks best that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and choose the selective color and we're gonna bring the reds and the yellows because they kind of lost themselves into the blue tone. So on um, you want to choose the red colors and I always keep it at absolute it's just gonna have a bigger impact and I like to p bring more of the yellows in the reds and make them darker just like that and the same way we're gonna choose the yellows we're gonna bring them up make them darker just like that and now we're gonna play with some cyans and blues so we're gonna choose the blues first and pull them to more of the blue side and then choose the cyans so we're gonna pull them also to the blue side and then also to the green side a little bit right here to kind of offset it and not make it too too blue um, that's it and now I'm gonna show you guys exactly what was before and after all of the color grading. So I just grouped all of those together and this is before and this is after the color grading and you could easily already stop here but another thing that I do is I like to bring the shadows and the highlights a lot more in the picture and I'm gonna show you guys how I do it just right now and before that I'm just gonna bring I'm just gonna merge all of those together because you guys know that I don't like to keep it messy <laughs> again this is just the way I do it a lot of people hate me for that and I always get comments from you guys that you don't understand why I would do something like that but I don't know it's just the way I've been doing it and it works for me so also as if you can see I have my actions pulled out here and these are just the actions that I use um, most of the time and I have the highlight and shadow action here at the very top and it's just a lot easier for me to work that way so if you do want to create an action I'm gonna show you guys um, right now how to do that so to create the action you're just gonna press this button right here and I'm just gonna call it um, highlight 2 I already have the highlight action but you know we're just gonna name it that and you're gonna press record and we're gonna duplicate the layer duplicate the layer now we're gonna go into image adjustments curves and I'm just gonna choose just the very middle of the curve and bring it up just like that and we're gonna press OK now you're gonna press this little uh, button right here and it's just gonna create a layer mask and then we're gonna press Control I 
if you don't want to use the keyboard you can go into image adjustments and just choose invert and as you can see it says here you're just gonna press control I to do that that's pretty much it you're just gonna stop and your action is recorded and now if you would play the action it would just do all of these steps for you um, now you're gonna make the shadow one so same thing uh, I'm gonna call it shadow 2 record duplicate the layer press OK image adjustments curves then just pull it down this time okay and now again we're gonna create the layer mask control I and stop it and that's it you created yourself a shadow lay uh, a shadow action and if you play it it will do all of these for you so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those two because I don't need them and I'm just gonna be using the ones that I already created so I'm just gonna go ahead and play my highlight action and again I'm switching to the tablet and if you don't have the tablet again just choose the opacity pretty low maybe around 30 20 again just play around with it and see what works for you so I'm zooming in and I always start with the eyes so I'm gonna bring the eyes right here very middle and if it is hard for you to kind of understand where to place the highlight you can just see at the picture and see where the natural highlight is and just intensify it so as you can see right here right there on the nose on her lip then you can make it a little bit bigger go ahead and intensify that cheekbone the chin forehead this is before and after the highlight it just brings the picture to life and I love it so much and also I actually like to go under the brow like this then you can just zoom it out to see if you like the way it looks if you need to add more or take something out I'm just gonna add a little bit more highlight just right here under the eye with the bigger brush just like that another thing that I really really love to do with the highlight is um, create more drama in the hair especially if they're blondes it just shows up so good and if you kind of messed up you just go with your eraser tool and erase it and then just continue doing it the smaller the brush you choose the more detail you're gonna put into the picture and the bigger you choose just the more light you will bring into it I like to start with the smaller brush and then just work my way up to the bigger one okay now I'm gonna choose the bigger brush as I said and I'm just gonna bring more brightness and again I'm just following the natural um, highlight in the picture as a guidance okay so I think the face looks good this is before and after and I'm gonna go ahead and now work on the body and we're just gonna highlight her shoulder her arm and her back and maybe just a little bit here on the dress Okay, so this is before and after on the highlight. Now I'm gonna just switch to the background layer right here and play the shadow action. And now we're gonna be intensifying the shadows. And again, I like to start with the eyes and I just go around the eye to make those lashes stand out. I also like to darken the shadow sometimes in the makeup underneath the eye if you put more shadow underneath the eye usually it uh, makes the eye look bigger it's just like an optical illusion I like to go along the nose and same thing with the lip if you put some shadow underneath the lip right here it just makes the lip uh, appear a little bit bigger you don't have to liquefy you can just apply 
the highlight and shadow technique and make your picture look really really awesome this is what I truly believe makes my pictures stand out is the highlight and shadow technique and if you uh, learn how to use it properly uh, your pictures are gonna look bomb and I'm gonna also use it on the hair a little bit not too much um, I normally notice that the hair just looks great with highlights and uh, you don't really need to add too much of the shadows but in some places it might look kind of cool so I'm gonna do that alright so this was with the shadow and as you can see it just added so much to the picture uh, you can also do a slight vignette if you like to like along around the corners like that um, I don't particularly like it especially in this picture it already has the natural vignette so I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna do one more round of highlighting and then um, I'm do gonna do like the final touch-ups of the picture so I really love this little spark right here and I'm gonna intensify it just kind of intensifying a little bit of the highlight maybe just some in the inner corner right here to make her eyes stand out maybe some on the lips I think that's good enough I just wanted to really intensify the eyes just a little bit more I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you guys what was the before and after of the highlight and shadow So this is before and after, as you can see it's a dramatic difference. Some might like the before and some might like the after better. To be honest, I like both of them. I think they both are very different and very cool. But I'm gonna go with the, the highlighted and shadowed one because it just makes it look a little bit more fairy tale and like different and just a little bit more unrealistic. And I just love making my pictures look unreal and almost like a painting. It's just my style and how I like to do it. So now we're going to uh, do the final color grading uh, or just color correction. And I'm going to just choose selective color. And we're going to make the yellow stand out a little bit more. Maybe get those reds a little bit redder like that. Yeah, same with the yellows. Actually, if I'm going to make them a little bit lighter, I like that. Okay, and then blues, more blue, cyan's, greenish, bluish. Okay, that looks awesome. This was the before and after the color. I think it looks great. Maybe a little bit too much. So if you think that it's a little bit too colorful, you can just lower the opacity and play with that. Okay, I think that looks awesome. And actually now that I'm looking at it, I want to make it a little bit more centered. So I'm going to take my crop tool and if you guys have noticed, I don't really stick to any particular like size of the image or the resolution. I just kind of make it whatever uh, looks ple like good to me. So I'm just going to lower this down and kind of widen this a little bit and this right here just like that and then I'm gonna crop it so it's not really a square not a rectangle it's just kind of in between and I'm gonna use my like distortion tool to um, correct these white lines over here so you're just gonna select that right here right click free transform distort and just like that very very easy and then same on this side just make sure you don't choose uh, like the part of the back if you do you're gonna drag it with the whole thing and then you're just gonna distort the model and it's not gonna look good so I'm doing the same exact thing and just moving it to the side and if I distorted a little bit of the dress over here on the side it's a very easy fix you go to the liquify uh, make your brush smaller and just liquify it to the side that's pretty much it problem solved very easy Ta-da! I love this picture so much I hope you guys like it as well and let's just actually compare it to the before uh, let's see so this was the before 
and this is after before and after as you can see we completely changed the color of the image uh, and I really really love the blue it's it has been my obsession I hope this was helpful to some of you guys don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video bye